Now we'll be talking all about importing and exporting graphs with Gremlin I.O. Now, Gremlin I.O. is just one of five different ways you can create and load existing graphs into Datastax Enterprise Graph. We'll cover Gremlin I.O. in this presentation, but the Graph API is a method that is used when creating small to medium-sized graphs that one can execute individual statements in Gremlin Console or in the Datastax Studio. Gremlin I.O. is suitable for exporting and importing small to medium-sized existing graphs, and it's recommended to use this in development environments. So the Graph API is generally slower than the Gremlin I.O. utility, but the Gremlin I.O. utility is more suitable when exporting and importing existing graphs. Gremlin mutating traversals are more suitable for mutating existing graphs, and the Graph Floater utility is capable of parsing existing collections of text files and data sets stored in JDPC-compatible databases, and loading such data as graphs into Datastax Enterprise. This utility is good for loading small to medium-sized graphs. There's also a Spark-based bulk loading mechanism that is ideal for loading large graphs. Now, we'll cover all of these sections in depth, but for right now, we're gonna focus on Gremlin I.O. Here are some of the ways you might use Gremlin I.O. Migrating between Apache Tinkerpop enabled graphs is a common use case for using Gremlin I.O. as is serializing graphs between databases and tools. You can also use Gremlin I.O. to make backup copies of existing graphs. Once again, Gremlin I.O. is not recommended for production use in that we may end up replacing Gremlin I.O. with a different API in the future. Here are the main types of file formats that you would use for graph serialization with Gremlin I.O. GraphML is a commonly used format reminiscent of XML. It's accepted by a wide variety of graph tools, applications, and libraries, though keep in mind that GraphML is generally a lossy format as it lacks support for complex data types. Speaking of which, it's important to consider the compatibility of features for each of these formats. For example, keeping in mind data type support or multi and meta property support. Failure to do so may result in errors or data loss. Graphson is an Apache Tinkerpop originated JSON-like format. It's lossless and the text format of choice for interchanging data between Apache Tinkerpop aware, non-JVM based applications. Lastly, Gryo is an extremely efficient lossless binary graph format for use on the JVM. Gryo is enabled by Cryo, with a K, which is a fast and efficient object graph serialization framework for Java. This is the preferred file format for data interchange inside of the Apache Tinkerpop stack. Let's put some of these formats to use. Here's an example of using Gremlin I.O. with graph ML format. The syntax is fairly straightforward. We call the graph I.O. method and let it know that we're going to be working with graph ML. Then we use the write graph method to export an existing graph and the read graph method when importing a graph from a supported file. Here's an example of what a graph ML file looks like for the two nodes and one edge from the previous slide. As you can see, it's a human readable format and knowledge of XML and XML schema helps here. Next, let's look at using Gremlin IO with the graphs on format. As you can see, the syntax here is nearly identical with the exception of specifying that we're now using Graphson in the Graph I.O. method and specifying a Graphson compliant file. For additional customizations, please see the documentation. And here's what a Graphson file looks like for our two vertices and one edge from the previous slide. As you can see, it's in JSON format and it's human readable. Finally, here's how we load a cryo file with Gryo. The syntax is similar to our other examples with the exception of changing our file format method to Gryo in the GraphIO method. Because Cryo is a binary format, there is no human readable output to take a look at. Let's get some hands-on practice with Gremlin IO. 